For this lecture, we'll look at how economic growth can affect the achievement of full employment. So we're going to break this lecture down into two parts. So firstly, we're going to see what happens when there is a low economic growth. And secondly, we'll talk about how what happens to, to full employment when there is high or strong economic growth. But before we go into that, we're going to look at what, what happens when there is low economic growth and what happens to employment rates when growth is low. So we know that in a two-sector economy, we have households and businesses. So we're returning to the concept of the circular flow again. And we know that households provide labour resources. And this is in the form of employment to businesses. So we know that flow one is the provision of labour resources. For now we're just going to assume that households only provide labour resources and they don't provide capital or land resources. And what the business does is the business then provides households with incomes. So they're going to pay for their labour resources. And what the households do with the income is spend it in the form of expenditure. And lastly, we have production. So when the households spend their income, businesses must, in fact, give households back or remunerate the households by producing goods and services. So what happens if economic growth is low? So we must know that something must have triggered this low economic growth and we're going to assume that confidence is very low at this moment. And so because confidence is low, expenditure is going to decrease. So as we know, when confidence is low, because aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus net exports, we know when confidence is low that consumer spending would decrease. And when consumer spending decreases, expenditure would decrease. And so then businesses have no incentive to actually produce goods and services because they're going to produce a surplus as demand is excess in, in um, sorry, in supply is in excess of demand. And we can see that by just analyzing a normal supply and demand graph. So we know that, let's assume for the moment, aggregate supply is upward sloping, and we know demand. This is just for simplicity reasons. It doesn't actually, this diagram does not represent reality, but this is only for simplicity reasons. So we know that when aggregate demand decreases, there is going to be a shortage or a surplus in supply. So when we have supply here at this price, we're going to see that demand corresponds to this price. And then therefore, here is the quantity demanded, and here is the quantity supplied. And so now there is a surplus. So what businesses do is that they would lower production or lower the production of goods and services. And as a result, economic growth would decrease. And so when they lower production of goods and services, they no longer need their, the labour resources. They no longer need to hire as much labour because they're not producing as many goods and services. And so the circular flow flows on. So the labour resources will go down, and therefore incomes will go down, and therefore expenditure will go down again, and therefore the production of goods and services will go down. And so this is a very vicious cycle of business activity where everything would flow into the next flow. And so now you can see, because we're just focusing on economic growth and its impact on employment, we can see that because there is low growth, because there is due to possibly, say, low expenditure, the demand for labour resources will go down and therefore cyclical unemployment would increase. And so now we can see the link between economic growth and employment is that cyclical unemployment may increase. And therefore that would hinder the achievement of full employment. 
let's look at the second concept now. Let's look at where we have make this pink. We have strong economic growth. Now naturally we can assume that this would just be the opposite, right? We have high expenditure and therefore greater demand or a greater production of goods and services and therefore businesses would have to hire more labour and therefore pay more income and then the cycle goes on. And so therefore there should be an increase in employment and therefore a movement towards full employment. So we can just say note here a movement towards for employment. This is the most natural instinct that we're going to assume when economic growth is high therefore the demand for products is high and therefore businesses to satisfy the demand must therefore produce more goods and services and to produce more goods and services they would have to hire more labor and that's pretty straightforward analysis but think of the situation where possibly businesses become more efficient and that's why incomes have increased because labor has become more efficient so strong economic growth is also due to efficiency it's not only because we've hired more labor and therefore we can produce more it is also because we're more efficient and this is can be due to utilization of capital or research and development. So what happens when we become more efficient? We don't need as many as much labor as before because labor is a very high cost of production. It is a cost that businesses try to cut because at the moment in Australia our labor costs are very fairly high. Okay, so what what happens when inflate what what happens if we're becoming more efficient? Think of the example of bank tellers. Before when you wanted, wanted to withdraw money, you would have to go to the bank and ask the teller to withdraw money and then they would have a job. And therefore, that is another source of employment. But now, we've discovered or um, invented this thing called the ATM or the automated, or the automatic teller machine. And so this this machine actually took the place of these bank tellers and so they no longer need jobs and this forms a source of structural unemployment where there is a mismatch between the skills of a bank teller and the requirements of the job because they don't because banks or the financial institutions don't actually need these people to actually sit behind a counter and give people money when they withdraw money from the bank. That job has been taken care of or has been replaced by a machine. And we know that we don't have to pay machines because they're, they're a fixed cost as opposed to a variable labor cost that bank tellers actually are. So we can see that even though strong economic growth may lead to an increase in the demand for labor in the short run, when we increase efficiency here, we're actually increasing structural unemployment because there will be a greater mismatch between the skills and the requirements of the job. And so we have to have to um, acknowledge the fact that even though growth may lead to employment or a decrease in cyclical unemployment, that is unemployment caused by low demand it may and I stress may increase structural unemployment and structural unemployment is interchangeable with natural unemployment so we can see that one when economic growth is low unemployment will definitely increase but when, when economic growth is high, unemployment may increase due to the fact that businesses are becoming more efficient and therefore require less or fewer workers. So unemployment may increase to the extent that 
businesses are replacing workers with technology. But in the general sense, when we think of strong economic growth, we will come back to the idea of the circular flow, and therefore greater production would lead to greater labour, demand for labour, and therefore a decrease in unemployment. So that's the link between economic growth and the employment rate of the country.